Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. PM Modi receives rousing welcome from overseas Indians in Australia. PDI moves Supreme Court against trials in Park Military Courts. And Bangladesh struggling to pay for fuel due to dollar shortage. And now for all the details. Thousands of overseas Indians cheered on as Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed a mass rally in one of Sydney's biggest sporting arenas on Tuesday. A red mass showing for a foreign leader in Australia. PM Modi, who was joined by his Australian counterpart, Anthony Albanese, paid tribute to the many connections between the two countries, from cricket and tennis to films and Indian street food in Sydney. He said the strongest link between Indo-Aussie ties is mutual respect and trust, which has been developed by the Indian diaspora. The Prime Minister hailed India as the mother of democracy and asserted India's position in the world as the force of global good. He also announced the opening of a new Indian consulate in Brisbane. Earlier in the day, the Indian Prime Minister interacted with business heads and prominent public figures of Australia. He is also scheduled to hold bilateral talks with Albanese on Wednesday. Prime Minister, before the last time I saw someone on the stage here was Bruce Springsteen and he didn't get the welcome that Prime Minister Modi has got. <laughs> Prime Minister Modi is the boss. And India began showcasing the Himalayan region of Kashmir to tourism officials of G20 countries on Tuesday hoping to attract foreign visitors to the region known for its scenic beauty. But the hosting of the Tourism Working Group meet has rattled Pakistan, as its foreign minister on Monday said, India is abusing its presidency of the G20. On the second day of the meet, Jammu and Kashmir's chief administrator, Manoj Sinha, said the region had to suffer from state-sponsored terrorism by neighboring Pakistan for 30 years. But now it is open to a new era of growth, peace and development. For almost 30 years, this land of peaceful coexistence of almost all religious sects had to suffer state-sponsored terrorism by our neighboring country. Jammu Kashmir is witnessing a new era that has opened limitless possibilities of growth and peace. The delegates were also given a taste of Kashmir's rich cultural heritage and tour on the famed Shikara boats on the iconic Dal Lake. India has long blamed Pakistan AIDS terrorists to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley, a charge Islamabad denies. Well, Pakistan's main opposition, PTI party, has approached the Supreme Court against PM Shehbaz Sharif-led government's decision to prosecute civilians under the Army Act. PTI, led by former PM Imran Khan, has urged the Apex Court to declare the government decision and crack down on PTI supporters as illegal and unlawful. It has also challenged the deployment of armed forces in capital Islamabad and provinces of Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan following the arrest of Imran Khan on May 9th. The development comes as the parliament passed a resolution on Monday backing the government's decision to try rioters under the Pakistan Army Act. Human rights organizations have opposed the move, claiming that military courts conduct summary trials, hearing only abridged evidence. Scores of female handicraft and handloom workers in POK staged a demonstration recently to demand their unpaid dues by local authorities governed by Pakistan. They blame their pleas are being repeatedly ignored. A report. The ouster of PTI leader Tanvir Ilyas from the post of Prime Minister of Pakistan occupied Kashmir after he criticized the courts for interfering in his government's affairs has taken a toll on the functioning of the government-run schemes in the region. Scores of women workers recently staged a demonstration claiming that they have not been paid dues for the past four months under the Kamyab Khawateen program, which was launched by Ilyas. They stitched Kashmiri shawls and did handicraft work, but their payments are now stuck due to internal politics. 
हमारा ये मुतालबा है कि आम लोगों को हमारी जो पेमेंट चार मंथ हमने लगाए हुए हैं हमें वो पे दी जाए और इन लोगों ने हमें काम भी करवाए हैं हमने स्टिचिंग की है क्राफ्ट का काम किया है सब कुछ किया है लेकिन इन लोगों ने हमें कुछ भी नहीं दी है जब भी हमें खुद कहा कि आप अपना किराया पैदा करो और जब तक तनख्वाह यहाँ पे नहीं होती है इधर से तो आप अपना काम घर से लाते करें वो काम भी इन्होंने इधर ही जमा कर लिया तो हमें कुछ This is not something new as locals and government workers have to often face exploitation at the hands of the stooge authorities in the occupied region which is governed by Islamabad. And Sri Lanka Statistics Department in a statement on Monday said that inflation rate NCPI the National Consumer Price Index eased to 33.6% year on year in April after a 49.2% rise in March. The NCPI captures broader retail price inflation and is released after every 21 days. The data shows food price rises eased sharply to 27.1% in April while non-food inflation was at 39%. The data comes as an IMF team is in Colombo to evaluate Sri Lanka's economy after the global lender approved a nearly 3 billion dollar bailout in March. Sri Lanka has been struggling with soaring inflation since early last year but it has been decreasing in 2023 with analysts predicting it will reach single digit levels by September. And Bangladesh is struggling to pay for imported fuel because of a dollar shortage. Letters from the state petroleum firm show with its warning of an alarming decrease in fuel reserves. It owes more than 300 million dollars to six overseas companies, some of which have either sent fuel cargoes, than scheduled or threatened to halt supplies according to BPC, the Bangladesh Petroleum Corporation. The country is already grappling with power cuts that have hurt its exports oriented garments industry. Bangladesh's dollar reserves have shrunk more than a third since Russia's invasion of Ukraine last February to stand at a 7-year low of 30.18 billion dollars. It already had to secure an IMF loan of 4.7 billion dollars this year as it deals with higher cost of imported fuel and food. And in a bid to examine roadside plants and provide them with the needed care, a tree ambulance makes rounds across India's Udaipur city. The tree ambulance is an initiative by an NGO which aims to make the city a greener one by planting more trees and subsequently maintaining them on a regular basis. The initiative has been running successfully for the past five years. As part of it, volunteers have planted 5,250 saplings at some of the major intersections of the city so far. ये भी ट्री एम्बुलेंस जहाँ पे भी जाती है इसमें इतनी व्यवस्था दे रखी है कि जो हमारे इसके साथ में तीन लेबर काम करती है वृक्ष को पूरा व्यवस्थित टी गार्ड समेत खाद वार लगा के कंप्लीट करके आती है और लगाने के पश्चात कभी पेड़ में कोई खराबी आ जाती है कोई टी गार्ड जैसे टूट फूट जाता है चोरी हो जाता है या पेड़ खराब हो जाता है तो ट्री एम्बुलेंस जाके उसको व्यवस्थित करती है Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.